Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to Sister Wives with Mary Jane Kay. Today I'm doing a special jump ahead episode for one of my first subs, TKC for Car. I always take requests if there's a specific topic my viewers and listeners want me to cover or a specific show you want my take on, whatever it is, if you are taking the time to listen to me, then I'm going to listen to all of you and do my best to cover what you guys want to hear. I appreciate everyone who listens, who comments with their wonderful insights, and everyone who decides to subscribe or just even listen. I really appreciate it, guys. I decided to do a commentary on a whim one day because my friends are not the type to watch Sister Wives, and I had some insights with nowhere to share them. It's not like I have a huge sub comp, to be honest, and I wasn't even expecting to have 10 people listen. My goal isn't the numbers. Things will work however they work, and I'm good with it. I just want to share my take with all of you, and for you guys that are interested, please share your insights with me because I love the dialogue. I appreciate it. And the thing is, everyone comes from a different life and has a different personality. Everyone has a different perspective. And when you guys share that perspective with me, it opens my mind even further to tackle different angles and different sides of the prism I never thought to ponder before. So I really do appreciate it. I also want to remind everyone to please check out Christine's cooking show available on TLC's website and on TLC's Instagram. Every Sunday, a new episode will be posted. I encourage everyone to check that out. I encourage everyone to watch because if Christine gets enough views, she gets a TV show and a professional kitchen. And I can tell Christine loves to cook from the show and to succeed at doing something that you love and to be able to live from that, there is no better feeling and fulfillment. So I definitely wish her all the success in the world. So if everyone who listens can just check it out every now and then, I think it would be wonderfully magical for Christine to have some of her dreams. And it's also a simple thing that we can all do to make Christine's dream come to fruition. So as far as the schedule goes, this week I'll be covering TKC for Cars Request of Truly's Kidney Failure episode, and that's Sister Wives Season 6, Episode 16, Browns in Crisis. And next week, she has requested Season 8, Episode 2, A Family Meltdown, and I will cover that next week. And then I'll resume with Season 1, Episode 4, where I left off. And I'll keep going until the new season airs. If anyone is interested also in 90 Day Fiancé, I cover all things 90 Day on my other channel, 90 Day with Mary Jane Kay. And I want to mention to everyone that a lot of the Sister Wife seasons, not all but many of them, are available free with no login required on the TLC Go app as well. Okay, let's get into the episode. Season 6, Episode 16 of Sister Wives, Browns in Crisis. Just for a little background, because we are skipping around for context, the episode before this, the wives went away, so Cody was left in charge of the kids and truly hadn't been feeling well. That's just a quick synopsis of where we are at now. Christine explains that the four moms went on a trip to San Francisco, and while they were away, Truly got sick. They took her to the doctor, and the doctor told Christine Truly just had the flu. So Christine left Truly with Aspen because they have to go pick flowers for the commitment celebration, and there isn't much time left, and there's a lot on the to-do list for the commitment ceremony. The wives and Cody are seated on their extra small couch, and Cody explains that it's a busy week, and they have a lot of decisions to make. He says for the five of them to agree on anything is so difficult. Everyone is picking pretty colorful flowers and Robin points to brown, shriveled up leaves, not even vibrant, pretty colored fall leaves. And she says, look at those leaves over there. The ugly, lonely leaves on the floor in the corner. No one asked to dance. And she says, look at those leaves over there. They are so pretty. And Janelle is happy they chose the fall. She says because they can do a lot with leaves and gourds and there are fall colored flowers as well and Janelle says there are a lot of flowers that are really pretty. Robin says it was weird to hear that come out of Janelle's mouth. She turned around and went who said that? I'm surprised she didn't say I'm just sitting here saying who said that because she starts every thought with I you know I'm just sitting here and this time there was no sitting there. Robin turned around. (laughs) Janelle says the most surprised person at her excitement over the flower picking is her. Cody imitates Janelle and puts his hands to his face in excitement saying, oh, look at the pretty flowers. And that's so not Janelle, but here she is saying it. Janelle says she must have left her body temporarily or something. 
The flower shop ladies ask what the occasion is that they will be celebrating, and Mary says they are celebrating their commitment to each other, that they are all in their homes and back together, so they're just doing a big celebration. Cody says the reason they want to get flowers is because they are trying to express that this is way more than just a party for his family. They're going to celebrate their commitment to one another, to celebrate their family mission statement, and they're also going to do it to validate their relationship in front of all of their friends. The shop owner Bree says she has never met polygamists, but she is happy for them and maybe sometimes having four wives isn't a bad thing. Robin says they all really like calla lilies. Janelle says that one of the only things they all agree on are that they all really like calla lilies. Janelle says, I don't know anything else that we agree on. And Cody says, you agree on the same husband. They all laugh. And Christine says two things, calla lilies and Cody. That's all, just two things they agree on. They pick flowers and then the shop owner suggests branches. And Christine brainstorms a tree of life on each table as a centerpiece. Christine says that's her favorite idea so far. Cody says that's his favorite so far too. Janelle asks a tree of life. Cody agrees. Robin says, I love it because we are putting our roots down in that spot. Christine says, we finally have an idea. As we know, those roots from Vegas have now been uprooted in Flagstaff and Christine has completely branched off. Christine says when Bree, the flower shop owner, was talking about the branches, she thought about the tree of life and that tree of life sounds so absolutely perfect for their family. Bree says sometimes five tastes have their differences, but she tried to incorporate it all, and with five of them, they incorporated everything that they liked individually all together in one. Now that the flowers are done, they are all going to decide on what type of cake they want for the commitment ceremony. The five of them head to the cake shop, and they are taste testing a million different types of cakes and fillings and frostings and icings. Cody explains the five of them all like different cake flavors, but Cody's excited about the cake because he has a unique idea for the cake. Cody tells the owner of the cake shop that he has a cake design idea in mind and he doesn't think she can do it. If she can't do it in Cody's mind, then why are they there at all? I would have said, I want the cake shaped this way, is it a possibility? But it was kind of dismissive to bring it up before telling her what he has in mind and saying, I don't think you're capable of doing it. I know it's not a huge thing, but I found it to be a little dickish and a little prickish. So it was dickish and prickish. The owner laughs and invites him to draw what he wants. Christine tells Cody, can you just tell her, please? Cody draws out a rough drawing of a tree, and he says in his confessional scene, let's make a cake that's like a tree. Wouldn't that be cool? He has zero artistic ability, and I'm not sure why he had to behave so dramatically drawing it, telling the owner he didn't think she could do it. Why not just ask directly, can we do a cake shaped as a tree? He makes everything way more dramatic and way more complicated than it needs to be. 100% all the time, he's always like that, even simple things. Cody wants green leaves and seeing the wood go up. And when he says seeing the wood go up, what I ascertain from that is meaning the lines in the bark. That's what I'm ascertaining. He tells the cake shop owner that this is why I think it will be difficult because we are talking about cake and the cake shaped as a tree having a narrow neck. They can make cakes that look any way you want using Rice Krispie treats, fondant, molding, airbrushing, but Cody doesn't seem to know that. Janelle, always the practical one, tells Cody, we also don't have an unlimited budget. Back on the couch, Janelle tells Cody, you're freaking me out a little bit, Cody. He says, well, I had a big vision of a big tree trunk and a big tree. The owner says it's definitely doable to make the cake shaped like a tree, and she asks how large Cody wants the tree. Cody says 36 inches high, and it means so much to him that him and his boys can wear shorts and sacrifice suits to be able to have the cake. And he doesn't fully explain his thought, but he means that for the boys can carry the cake so they don't get frosting and cake all over them in nice suits lifting it that they can just wear shorts that day. The bakery owner starts sketching the cake out and determining what it will take to make, how much of everything, the costs, the architecture, how they will build it with integrity so that it has a sound structure. And Janelle thought to herself, holy cow, this is like a science. This thing is like science. And Christine says, wood and metal will be the base of the tree cake. Janelle had no idea they did that. The cake will serve $500 and cost $8,500 in the dimensions Cody asked for. Christine says she felt it was Christmas morning and Cody was like a little boy expecting this bike and all he got was a rubber ball. 
Mary says they can still do the tree if they agree to make it smaller. Cody has a pouty face and Janelle tells him it may be smaller, but it's a very cool design. It's going to be very well designed and it's going to look really cool. Cody asks the bakery owner if in losing the size, it will still have enough wow factor that it will be sufficient. She says it's a good size, a smaller size, but big enough to carry across the impression Cody wants. Cody says you have to have it big enough to make it worth it. Christine asks Cody if he's happy enough with getting the tree a little bit smaller than he planned on because of the budget. She asks Cody if he's satisfied enough, and he says, sure, yeah. I wonder how many times uh, Cody asks if Christine is satisfied with him and if she's happy. I bet you not many. It's amazing. Janelle had to baby Cody about the tree being smaller than he wanted. Christine asked him if he was happy and satisfied with his accepting the smaller cake. They really babied him with kid gloves because he accepted a smaller cake when he wanted a big one. It feels kind of like tiny men with little things that get the lifted monster trucks and play the alpha male to compensate. In confessional, Christine says, raise your hand if you are happy in the end and keep your eyes open, like as if you're talking to a classroom of small little children. The wives all raise their hand. Cody halfway raises his hand and says, with the flavor, he was happy. What kind of idiot with over 20 kids is disappointed in spending less than 8500 to get a smaller version of the cake everyone is just going to eat and shit out? And it's still the cake he wanted. It's still the tree. It's still going to be a little pricey. It's just going to be a little smaller, so it's a little bit closer to the budget they had planned. I think it's ridiculous. Christine jokes after the raised hands exercise, aw, sad tears inside. And she says Cody is still sad about his cake. And she tells him, Cody, we are going to make your cake dreams come true. She jokes they aren't being very supportive, but I am, meaning all the other wives aren't supportive of his dream, but she is, and she does a fake smile on her face. Robin jokes that Christine wins the favorite wife contest today as everyone laughs in unison at Cody. Coming from the favorite wife, that was interesting that she conceded her title to Christine jokingly that day. His wives were babying him like a child, and they did make light of it, but a lot of their relationships must feel like appeasing a bratty child or walking on eggshells. Like they have to constantly give Cody his way or he'll get moody and mercurial. Next, we are at Mary's and it's Mariah's last day at home before she goes off to college. She's packing and later on they will do Mariah's birthday slash going away party. Cody and Mary are going to buy Mariah a car and surprise her with it. Mary says it's going to be really strange not having Mariah there all the time. She'll miss Mariah a lot. Tomorrow, Mary and Cody have planned to leave and take Mariah to Westminster College and get her settled in there. Mariah is super excited. Logan says Mariah is leaving the nest and going even further than he went. Logan says it's not a question of if the family is ready. It's more a question of if Mariah is ready. Logan has the same practicality and pragmatism of his mom. He seems very wise. I always felt he was incredibly mature for his age and responsible, and he has a very good head on his shoulders. Mariah says Logan said she will need to grow up and take care of herself. She says that's what growing up is about, and she can handle it. Cody calls Mariah down and tells her to get her shoes on. They have to go somewhere. Cody asks Mariah, do you want to get a car? Of course she does. Of course she says yes. Cody says he's been doing research and he found two cars and one is older than the other. One car is white, one car is gray, and he's taking Mariah to choose. At Christine's, Christine explains since it's Mariah's party, she sent Aspen and McKelty to go get all the stuff she needs for that because all of her gifts are usually last minute. While Aspen and McKelty help Christine by running her errands for her, Christine will be taking Truly to the doctor. Truly is bundled up on the couch. She looks very pale and very sickly and very tired. Christine says Truly doesn't have a lot of energy. She's just sitting there. She isn't doing anything but just lay there. Christine says Truly got sick when the wives were away in San Francisco when Cody was left in charge. She isn't better yet, and it's been five days of her barely moving, very low energy. She has no fever, but she went cross-eyed this morning, and she was sitting with McKelty in her bed, and Christine looked at her, and she went cross-eyed. And Christine said, whoa, she's cross-eyed, and McKelty told her, I know, Truly has been doing that all morning. Christine told McKelty she needs to know about things like that because it's very serious when someone goes cross-eyed. Christine doesn't know what being cross-eyed means exactly, but she knows it's serious and she is concerned there's something wrong with Truly's brain or her head. She says cross-eyed is weird. Christine is upset because Truly is sleepy and she was cross-eyed and it looked very freaky. 
She immediately took Truly to the doctor. Christine knew Cody was busy doing things with Mariah, and she said, it's fine. She can take Truly to the doctor alone, and she wants to go immediately anyway. She's not going to wait around for uh, Cody. Cody says he was wiped out after going car shopping with Mariah. He did a lot this week, so he laid down for a nap for a few minutes to wait and find out what Christine has to say. So Christine went to the pediatrician, and the pediatrician said the minute they said Truly's eyes were crossed, he was like, okay, she needs to go to the ER immediately. Christine says she was sitting in the doctor's office holding Truly, and he told her, you have to get out of here. You've got to go to the hospital. He told her to go straight to children's emergency. Some of the kids are at Mary's prepping for a party, and Mary got a text saying Christine is taking Truly to the ER at the hospital. Robin says if the pediatrician told her to go to the ER, that's scary because he's a good pediatrician. He knows his stuff. Christine's pediatrician told her this is serious, that it could be probable kidney failure or meningitis. Her Pete's doctor told her when eyes go cross, that's emergency immediately. I initially thought Cody was napping at Robin's because she went into the room to wake him. And I remembered the scene of Robin waking Cody to tell him about Christine's text, but he was napping actually at Mary's. I know I made a comment about this earlier to someone, but so he was napping at Mary's house, not Robin's. And Robin was the one to wake him to ask if he saw Christine's text about Truly. Cody asks Robin what's wrong. His kid has been sick five days. It started on his watch when he was in charge and he didn't know what's wrong. Robin explains while Truly is at the ER and Cody heads to Christine, he says all of a sudden he has a daughter headed to the ER and he's freaked out. Cody said when their family pediatrician sent Truly to the ER, he knew that it was pretty serious. He can't imagine what's going on. Her pediatrician says Truly didn't look good. He said he thought possibilities could include a brain tumor, meningitis, that was there too long. It could be something fatal. It could be something very, very serious. So the pediatrician was nervous. Christine got to the ER, ER and she checked in and Truly kept going cross-eyed over and over and over. Christine says she didn't know what it meant or how serious going cross-eyed is. That if someone's eyes go cross, suddenly they need to go straight to the emergency room. Cameras weren't allowed in the ER because of the severity of Truly's condition. Cody got to the hospital that afternoon and Christine looked devastated. He says, Truly looks like she's resting. She doesn't look good. She doesn't look healthy. Christine says she's at the point of absolute, is my daughter going to live? Back at Mary's, they're still planning the party for Mariah and Isabel says she is scared of what they're going to find out and she is hoping Truly gets better. Mary gets a call from Cody. He says they brought in another specialist. The concern is about kidney failure. He says, I don't even know, but it looks like it will be another hour and a half. Mary says, okay, she looks really disappointed. Truly is near death, and yet they are still doing Mariah's birthday and going away party. And he's calling not just to let Mary know what Truly's condition is, but when he can make it to the party. If I was Mary, I'd cancel the party altogether and tell Cody to stay by Christine's side or do the party separately with the other wives and kids if it must happen. I found that to be a little bit insensitive. If I was Mariah, I'd say I would be worried for my sister and not need the party at all, or maybe do it just to distract the little younger kids who don't need to be in fear of Truly's condition. But I'd tell my dad definitely to stay with Truly. Mariah asks, did dad say kidney failure? And she seems very concerned. Aspen says, we don't know what's going on and that's scary. Cody says they called a kidney specialist in because Truly had no fluids in her. She was completely dehydrated. Her kidneys are completely shut down. I'm not blaming Cody, but when the sickness began under his care, was he being sure to hydrate all of the little ones enough? When her kidneys totally stopped working, Cody knew at that point that they were staying in the hospital with Truly. They told Christine and Cody that they think Truly has acute kidney failure and she was admitted in the hospital. Cody thinks Truly will be hospitalized for a long time. The whole family gathered at Christine's for a group prayer. Logan asks if everyone knows what is going on with Truly, and he explains to everyone she's a little bit sick and dehydrated and she might have a kidney infection, which means she'll need lots of water and medicine at the hospital. There were little kids, so he explained it very well in a, in a way that was very kid-friendly and not in a scary way, and I appreciated that. Logan asks if one of the moms will offer up the prayer, and Janelle suggests Aspen lead the prayer. It was really heartwarming to see Logan explain to the family, and Aspen starts the prayer, but she breaks down sobbing. It made me emotional seeing it, because when you love someone and there is a major health issue beyond your control, beyond your help, 
It is so terrifying and so scary. Robin hugged Aspen's, her sisters all hugged Aspen. It was very sweet and a very just pure, loving moment. Janelle says she has been really proud of how Aspen and McKelty have stepped up. In confessional, she says they raised their kids with the idea that they would shoulder responsibility if they had to. Robin says, although they want to give their kids a childhood, they also raise them with responsibilities and they are all there helping as well. Robin says between all of them, the bases are covered. Robin says the only thing that you can do in this situation is to be positive and to have faith. She says they've seen a lot of amazing things, a lot of faith moving mountains for them. Cody gets to Mary's that night and all the kids are loud and hyped up and Cody asks Gabe to stop yelling. Robin asks about Truly. Cody says Truly wouldn't drink. She got the flu and she got so dehydrated that her kidney shut down. And now she has acute kidney failure. Cody explains in the couch scene with Christine that for some reason, one small thing shut Truly's kidneys down and the prognosis is they have to get her kidneys to start working again. And that's the thing that was sort of frustrating about it. Cody continues, it's like, hey doc, can you tell me when will her kidneys work in one day, in two days? Christine said he doesn't know. He told them it's Truly's body. It's all on Truly's time. Truly got admitted they will help they will keep her for a couple days so they can see if they can hydrate her and help her kidneys to start working and they will get her to start eating and drinking. Then they will see if her kidneys will start working. And once they start working, then they can send Truly home. Christine says there are two different courses of action. The doctors might need to put Truly on dialysis, but they want to wait to try and see if her kidneys will jumpstart because she's so young to be doing dialysis. There is medication to help jumpstart her kidneys so she will hopefully urinate. One of Robin's kids asks, what happens if her kidneys don't work? And McKelty tells her, let's not think like that. Cody says they are lucky Truly started acting funny because they never would have gone to the hospital to check this had Truly not acted out of the norm otherwise. Aspen said she felt like nobody was taking it seriously. She didn't think anybody understood that Truly is sick in the hospital with kidney failure. Mary tells Cody with Truly being so sick that Cody shouldn't accompany Mary and Mariah the next morning to move her into Westminster and to drive her all the way to Utah. Mary tells Mariah she knows she wanted her dad there, but she doesn't feel it's needed, and Mariah says she understands. Mary says she isn't going to pull Cody away from that, that she thinks he needs to be there. I thought that obviously was the right thing to do, and I don't even think Cody should have left the hospital or Christine's side at all to even attend the party, but I understand him wanting to update the family. Cody agrees. He tells Mariah to say goodbye to everyone that night. Cody apologizes to Mariah for not going. He hugs her. He tells her that he loves her. Cody explains that Christine will sleep at the hospital and he again explains truly has kidney failure and that they gave her meds to jumpstart her kidneys so that she'll pee. He says she isn't well, that kidney failure, failure means dialysis or death. Christine says she spent the whole night praying in the hospital and being woken up by truly asking her to cuddle with her and she would get in her bed for a little while, but it's not safe. So she'd get up out of the bed with truly and lay back in her bed and watched Truly hooked up to the tubes. Christine felt Truly looked terrible. Cody is at Mary's to say goodbye to Mariah, who is off to college, and he explains that Truly is in the hospital, and her illness began when Christine was out of town and Truly was under his care. He's hoping her kidneys function, and he says, this is pretty scary stuff, it's very spooky, and Mary and Mariah are headed to Westminster College in northern Utah. Cody planned on originally going with them, but he is staying behind with Truly, he says Christine is at the hospital and Cody is headed there because the doctor will be consulting with Truly soon. Mariah isn't taking any of her room decor to college because her mom wants to leave Mariah's room the same it, as it always is. And she says probably so her mom won't miss her too much. Mary says Mariah is super excited to go off to college and she knows Mariah will miss her family and her siblings. Mary says having Truly go into the hospital the day before Mariah goes off to college is putting a damper on things. It's as if Mary's saying truly picked a very unfortunate time to almost die because it affects what she planned for Mariah and the tone she expected with Mariah leaving. What should put, be putting a damper on things and everyone's primary concern should be truly surviving in the fight for her life. Getting dialysis is not just a simple permanent fix for a little kid in kidney failure. I wonder if Mary understands that as wonderful as it is that Mariah gets to go off to college and it's a happy time for her, so what if there's a cloud over it truly could actually die? And that's much more serious 
than any cloud over Mariah's experience of going off to college. Truly could die, truly could lose her life, and no longer exist. So it's very trivial that Mariah's party and going off to college has a damper compared to Truly's life being at stake. Mary says Mariah is concerned about Truly, but she's still so excited about college, and that puts a damper on it. Mary says it's a weird emotion going on. Cody calls Christine to check on Truly as Aspen walks in and we find out that they took Truly's blood that morning and the doctor will be in in an hour to discuss what to do next. They gave Truly medicine to try to make her urinate twice and it didn't work both times. Christine says the medicine they give people to pee when they're in kidney failure usually works within 20 minutes and it usually works most of the time but it hasn't worked with Truly both times. Cody says goodbye to Mariah and he meets Christine. He made it in time for the doctor's consultation and rather than doing blood dialysis, they are going to do abdominal dialysis. Cody says for right now, they will do a lot of praying and hope that she heals. Aspen is in charge at Christine. She's doing laundry. She had all the kids do their chores and everything is going well on that front. Aspen says it's depressing at Christine's and they are waiting to hear back from Christine on an update for Truly. Christine says Aspen is scared and she doesn't believe Truly will be okay. Christine says she doesn't have answers and she doesn't know what to tell everyone. Things are bad, but she doesn't think everyone needs to hear that. Christine wants to keep everyone's spirits up so they can have hope and their prayers will be a lot different than hers are. Cody is staying alone with Truly at the hospital for a little bit so Christine can go back home since it's been a couple days. She needs to get some stuff for herself and some stuff for Truly and then she'll head right back to the hospital ASAP. She tells viewers Truly is still in acute kidney failure, so tomorrow they will hook Truly up to a dialysis machine to do all the work for her kidneys. Christine says she's trying to go through the motions of pretending that things will be okay. She says it's really horrible to see this little tiny baby with all these tubes in her on this huge hospital bed. She says it's really hard. Cody says it's a heavy experience. They are totally out of control. Christine says Truly's numbers are still really bad, so they're going to insert a catheter today and start dialysis tonight. Cody says there's a lot going on, and so much of it is a hurry-up-and-wait type of thing. From one day to the next, they aren't really sure what's going on. It must feel terrifying and heartbreaking as parents to see your child in that situation where there is nothing you can physically do in your power. There's so much helplessness, and that must feel so devastating. This episode, guys, is really heavy. It was really hard for me to, to watch. I teared up multiple times, even though I already had seen it before and I already knew the outcome. Aspen says she's a wreck. She can't imagine what Mariah will be doing so far away, not knowing what's going on all the time. Mary explains that for a few months, her and Cody had planned on taking Mariah to college together. When Truly got sick, there was no question of where Cody needed to be. We see Mariah check out her dorm room and Mary and Mariah struggle to move in all of her stuff. Mary says it was a fun experience and Mariah ate up the experience and it worked out well considering the situation. Mary asks Mariah what she will do without her. She says Mariah will miss her, she will miss Mariah and it'll hit in two weeks. Back in Vegas, Truly has been on dialysis for 14 hours and it cleans what fluid they put in. It cleans some, but there is no release of anything yet. Truly is very puffy. Obviously, she's retaining all that water and she feels yucky. Being a kid in a hospital bed in pain when all you want is to play and experience life and the world is no fun. I know that um, from personal experience. It's miserable and it's amazing that Truly had Christine glued to her side and I'm very, very glad for that. The, the support that Christine gave Truly and the strength that Christine was able to have during that. It's not easy. Cody says Truly isn't looking good. He looks devastated as well. I'm not fully blaming Cody, but Truly got sick in his care, and I wonder had she been more tended to and more hydrated during her flu, had she got enough fluids, if this would have happened or not. Christine says the dialysis isn't working. Cody's at Janelle's. He's headed out to, again to check on Truly. Janelle says she has known Christine for a long time, and she's never seen her in a situation that was this stressful. Janelle says it's textbook the way Christine is holding it together, and she didn't know because Christine is sensitive. She didn't know Christine had this backbone. Cody says today dialysis wasn't effective, and they don't know what to do. They're waiting, and it's like Truly has given up hope. She's three years old, and he doesn't know if she understands, but he tells her, if you will pee, we will have a potty party, and when Truly can pee and poo and function properly, he will have a party for her. 
He wants truly to tell her brain to tell her body to function. Cody says she's starting to get the motivation. Christine says her eyes started to twinkle when Cody spoke to her and she thinks she got it. Cody gets to Janelle's and Hunter asks about Truly. Cody said he spent two hours listening to her scream and she's completely depleted of electrolytes and they can't put more in because she's not eliminating anything. So she is chemically completely off balance and she's in a lot of pain. Cody asked the doctor, when are we going home in a couple of days? And the doctor said, no, 10 days at least of her remaining in the hospital. Janelle says they are waiting for her kidneys to come online. Christine says the doctors are worried because so far the medicine that usually works failed and the dialysis also, which is the second option, hasn't been working. So they will increase the dose and double it and hope that it works. Christine explains that Truly is on dialysis to her family. She explains that it's tubes that go in and pump water into her abdominal cavity and it cleans out the toxins and flushes it back out again for 15. The doctor wants to try doing it for a full 24 hours to get the kidneys to kickstart. Cody says they looked down the abyss and one of the nurses told them with cases like that, they don't expect the um, person, the patient to leave the hospital or survive. It's now day nine. They've been in the hospital and it's a good day. Cody says that morning, the doctors came in and told them the dialysis worked. The numbers are down and it doesn't mean her kidneys are working, but the dialysis is working at least. So now she's off of death's doorstep and her numbers keep improving. Thank God. What a blessing. Christine says it's the best day ever so far, and Aspen visits Truly. She's amazed that Truly is getting better so fast, and she questions if she is really getting better. She still isn't sure if Truly will come home soon. She's worried about it. Aspen says she's been sick so long, how could she get better so fast? It was so sweet when Aspen visited her, and you could see the love she has for her sister and all the worry and concern that she feels for her. Janelle and everyone is now headed to Christine's house because Christine is going to call her house to give the family an update on Truly. Cody calls and tells everyone Truly is coming home tomorrow and everyone is so happy and elated. It's really heartwarming to see everyone's reactions. Truly's kidneys are working so they won't have to do dialysis at home. I teared up a million times during this episode and I already had seen it before. I knew the outcome, but it made me tear up. This episode was really hard to watch. I think it just brought up stuff for me and it was really hard for me to get through. I've seen it before. I knew the outcome, but it just really got to my emotions. Everyone is happy and they are taking Truly home. Cody is excited to take her home. It's magical and everyone is there to greet her and Truly runs straight to Hunter and I mean... Oh my God, my heart was melted in a puddle. Thank God, thank the universe that Truly was okay. Christine says the first seven days of Truly being in the hospital were the scariest days of her life. It was awful and the unknown of it, not knowing when she'd get better, was scary. Christine says it's amazing. She's a little miracle. Cody says it was all a challenge, but they got reconnected with Truly and with each other. Cody says in the business of life, you can take each other for granted and you can take your children for granted and that they got close to the edge there. Christine says you realize there are some things that really don't matter. Cody says he should just forget about the unimportant things and remember the important things. Christine says this is a good wake-up call and the family has a tea party for Truly. Cody says everything about their lives seems trivial and even trite when it's compared to the life of your child and the safety and the health of your children. Cody tells the party... Truly's bodily functions weren't working and they told her they needed to have a princess pee and poo party and parade. So now that she's home and Aspen is leaving for college, they're having that princess tea party. He always felt like a birthday party was a celebration of life. Today is not a birthday party. It's a princess tea party. And they are celebrating that Truly as well. Thankfully, thankfully. What a miracle. That's honestly a miracle that she made it. Thank God. What a blessing. She says in confessional she's happy to be out of the hospital, that her princess crown was on her hair. She says she likes drinking tea at her tea party because she lay down and had so much fun. My heart, when I saw Truly do her confessional, my heart melted in a puddle uh, like a million times this episode. There were a lot of tears. I've seen it. I knew the outcome. I just, I don't know why it really got to me. I, I cried multiple times. Christine says she takes nothing for granted anymore. She plays with her kids more. She listens to them more. They have, they're having more real conversations. She puts down whatever stupid thing that she's occupied with and she looks her kids in the eye. And really, when she speaks to her kids, she really is 100% present and all there with them. 
She's going to be the best mom she's ever been. Christine says the first couple days she was in the hospital, she started looking at people and there are people there who are there all the time and their kids are there all the time and their lives are on hold. And she cries and thanks her sister wives for helping run her life when she couldn't. She says she couldn't have done it without them. I think Christine is an amazing mom and full of strength to see how she handled Truly, how she handled Isabel, how she handles being a mom, how she handled leaving Cody. I really admire Christine again, and I want to remind everyone to please support Christine by watching her cooking show, Cooking with Just Christine, on TLC.com and TLC's Instagram page. I also know this season, Cody brought up that Christine blames him for what happened with Truly. I'm not a medical doctor, but she left Truly in Cody's care, and she got sick with the flu. And I wonder... Had Truly been hydrated enough and seen to enough as far as hydration um, from Cody um, during Christine's absence, if this would have happened, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. I know that kids don't drink enough fluids or water without prompting, so I just wonder, was this preventable had Truly been hydrated more closely? I'm not a doctor, and I'm definitely not pointing fingers because I don't know the answer. That does it for this episode. I'll be covering the new 90 day tomorrow before the 90 days tomorrow on 90 day with Mary Jane K. Next week, I'll be covering season eight, episode two of Sister Wives per TKC for Cars Request in case anyone wants to rewatch that one before next week. Again, that's season eight, episode two. And then I'll resume at season one, episode four, the week after that where I left off. And I'll continue from there till we hit the new season unless there are any requests. Thanks everyone for watching. Please like, share, subscribe, and comment down below. Let me know your insights. I love everyone's different takes and how it makes me think in different ways than I would were I pondering this with just my perspective. So comment away. I appreciate all of your comments and insights. Thanks everyone. See you guys next week. Bye.